Alright guys, so in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to match a photograph perspective. Um, so that would mean taking a photo in the real world and then uh, kind of interpolating where the camera would be in Rhino to create that same shot. That way the geometry you model in Rhino can be kind of uh, photomontaged into the photograph and look as if it was actually there. It'll have the same perspective uh, and then of course you'd have to work on lighting and materials to make it look real, uh, but this would be a technique on how to do it. Uh, overall, it's it's pretty easy to do. Uh, there's just a few things you need to do first. One is download a, a safe frame toolbar. The link is in the description below. Um, and once you unzip it, you'll get this little guy here, safeframe.tb. You just drag and drop that into Rhino, and you'll get a new toolbar, which is this one, the SF. Um, we're going to come back to that in just a second. The other thing we need to do is in perspective mode, we need to right click and go to viewport properties. Um, and we're going to be putting in a wallpaper. This is different than a bitmap background. Um, this is actually a, a constant photo. So I'm going to browse uh, and I have this photo here that I took in Lima. Uh, and so I say OK. You can see it's, it's going to be grayscale, but that's fine. And now uh, it doesn't matter where I move the camera, this is going to be exactly the same spot. Um, the next thing we have to do is to set up our rendering so that it is the exact same uh, ratio and proportion as that background. Uh, so if I go in, into Windows Explorer, I can click my image and go to Properties. Uh, and in the Properties, I can find the, the pixels here, 28, 16, 21, 12. So back in Rhino, under V-Ray Options, I need my output size to match that exactly, 21, 16, 2816, that's right, 2816, 2112, and that's a 1.33 aspect ratio, so I can lock that. Now, if I decide to make my image bigger or smaller, it's going to be the same aspect ratio, so it'll match up later. So with that done, now we need to go and click that safe frame toolbar, and you'll see in perspective view what that does for us. I'm going to close my options, and now it kind of grays out this outside zone and it just crops to this image. So now when I move my camera around, of course I'm not moving the background, but I can see what will and will not render in the scene. Um, the next step is to go back to those details and sometimes the camera will tell you um, what the lens length is, the focal length here. Uh, there's two. This one says a six millimeter. Um, this is just from a kind of point and shoot camera. Um, this isn't actually correct. Uh, if I were to set my perspective in Rhino to 6 millimeters, we'd have a lot of fisheye. Uh, so then you can just try to approximate it. Uh, I'm going to give it a guess at 32 millimeters. And you can see it changed the grid a little bit, but that's not really, you know, we don't see any noticeable changes. So right now I'm actually going to hide the grid by typing grid and then toggling off show grid. So now it's gone. Um, the next thing I'm going to do in top view, I'm just going to make a big, big plane. Uh, we can use to line up everything. Uh, and if it helps, uh, good tip here. Oh, I, no, there we go. See if I'm still there. Okay. Uh, is to make it just a grid out of this by contouring the plane. Uh, I'm using a 10 foot interval. It might be too much or too little for yours. There's all that. I'm going to select the plane again and contour it in the other direction. This time I'm going to do 20 feet because I don't need that many divisions. And then I'm going to type SEL surface. Um, and I'm going to delete the surface. I don't need that plane anymore. And I'll just group all these grids. So now in perspective view, I'm going to make it full screen. And you can see by rotating the camera around, I can start to try to align the grid lines to match the, the scene. So first thing I'm going to do is just try to match the bottom of those stairs and keep a consistent line. Having the kind of <clears throat> uh, grid in both dimension, dimensions is helpful because I can kind of see that these uh, poles laying on the ground are, are close to the the correct vanishing point there. I can try to tweak them even further and maybe we'll get it closer. So maybe that's, that's the m correct perspective. Uh, another helpful tip is to go ahead and just select the entire grid. I'm going to say copy say V for vertical, so now I can only move it up and down. And as I move it up and down, I can check and see if my if my uh, <clears throat> grid is accurate. You can see it's not now. If I just copy it to this location, 
you can see here it's lined um, pretty well with uh, kind of this indentation, but that's not the case on this side. And these two are level, so I need to move uh, my grids around so that they're back into perspective. Uh, so here, I'm just moving them up and down now by panning. Uh, I can move this one down if I hold control. Sorry, that's not working. Let's see. There we go. Uh, and, and just check and see there, it's much closer. Here at the top of that handrail, if we move further up to the tower. So this seems like we're, we're much closer to true perspective as I move it along. I see that things are lining up. So I can delete these. Really, I don't need that grid any longer, but we'll leave it. And now I could just say, let's, I'm going to model a tower in the background. Uh, so now I have this massive, massive tower. It's super, super wide at the base. Um, but I can just scale 1D and shrink it down. It doesn't need to be that deep. So there would be the tower, and if I go back to full screen, I can move this tower around, and it will it'll stay in perspective. Um, I'm just going to copy a couple instances of it. So it doesn't matter where it's at, <clears throat> it, it's still true to perspective, which means that when I apply materials and develop it, you know, to a better extent, it will uh, make my life easier once I move into Photoshop. So let's say I had those two towers there. Uh, with the safe frame on, all I'd have to do is click render, and uh, of course it's not going to render the background image or the grid, it's just going to render those two masses, um, but you can see that's the technique for, for perspective matches photographs. If you have any questions, leave comments below, uh, subscribe or like the video. Uh, I'm going to do a few more in this series of kind of looking at uh, some VFB channels and how to do a couple tips in Photoshop too. So look for those coming soon.